or so, we had hundreds, in fact, thousands of friends in the aboriginal villages of Taiwan. One day, a young mother brought her child to me and said, I want you to meet my son. I call him America. I said with surprise, America? Why did you call your child America? She told the story of how she had been in labor for 20 hours. The village people all thought that she would die, but then our doctor had successfully made the delivery. How better could I show my appreciation than to call the boy America? She explained. Even though I was a conscientious objector in civilian clothes, I served as Sunday school principal for the American military. One day I was in the chaplain's office with some officers. We were telling stories. I told them about little America and the hundreds of friends we have in the mountains. I will never forget the response of one of the officers. We are losing the war in Vietnam, he said, because we cannot win the friendship of the village people. You conscientious objectors could probably win it better than we can. Remember, though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. While in Taiwan, we also had the opportunity to teach English. We wrote our own textbooks and had a daily radio program. Seven days a week, a network of seven government stations via radio, we taught principles of democracy. We also taught the stories of Christian faith and explained what it meant to follow Jesus. <coughs> the country was under martial law and there were some things we could not say, but we said them anyway. We call for reconciliation between Aborigines and mainland Taiwaners. We got taken off the air. We describe the difference between the Christian and the Muslim faiths. We got taken off the air. We call for a shift in dollars from military to education, and we were taken off the air. But since it was one of the most popular English teaching programs on the island, we always got put back on again. One day, just before we left Taiwan, a military chief drove up with two men in full battle dress. We sighed to ourselves again and said, what have we done now? But they were friendly. They came with a large package, and in the package was a trophy from the Taiwanese government with the inscription, for helping us fight communism. We prize that trophy even today. We were reminded that though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of this world. When I returned to the United States, I prepared a report and sent a letter of appreciation to my senator, Senator Carl E. Munt of South Dakota. I expressed appreciation for having an opportunity to fight evil according to my conscience and the teachings of Jesus. He entered the report into the congressional record and wrote me a letter saying, I believe you and your team have done more than millions and millions of dollars of USA. Again, I was reminded, though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. Two years later, I was serving as a pastor in Oklahoma. I was part of a team who was conducting pre-draft boot camps, teaching seven-year-old conscientious objectors how to fight God's way. One day, I received a phone call are you the blankety blank communists running those boot camps? I acknowledged that I was directing boot camps for conscientious objectors, but I assured him that I was as opposed to communism as he was. Can we get together and talk, I asked. Blank no, he said. I've been trained to kill people like you, not talk to them. We'll give you nine days to get out of town, or we will burn your church down. And he hung up. We stood firm, and nothing happened. At the same time, Jim Smith ran for Congress in our district. In fact, he was elected. But on the day of his, his election, news broke that he had registered as a conscientious objector during World War II. The veterans of foreign wars were hopping mad. They had voted for him, and now they felt deceived. They called a gathering in a local theater in Weatherford to see if they could keep him from getting his seat. By cracky, I said, that would be an interesting meeting to go to. I went and sat in the middle of about 150 very angry veterans. They were so angry that the leader could hardly maintain order. All kinds of ideas were presented. About halfway through, I raised my hand. I hardly believed that I did this, but I went forward and said, I consider myself a patriotic American. I served my country for four and a half years in Taiwan as a conscientious objector. I told them about Little America and the thousands of friends that we had in the villages. 
I told them about the trophy that was inscribed for helping us fight communism. And I read to them the letter that I had received from Senator Mott. I don't know this Jim Smith, I said, but I do know that there is another way to fight evil. Perhaps Jim Smith also knows another way. Let's give him a chance. I sat down and all was quiet. You could hear a pin drop. Then one by one, four of those hardened, angry veterans got up and said, this man has served his country well. One of them even had the audacity to nominate me for an office in the Veterans of Foreign Wars. <laughs> Nobody wants war. Above all, God, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Trembling in the floor. Borrowed from any number of commercials. Will you dare to compare? Will you dare to compare? Are we acting like sons and daughters of God? Or are we acting no better than the pagans, those people who do not call or identify themselves with God or His family? You'll see in the sermon sizzler at the bottom of the row, with whom do I need to make peace? And how will I do it? Who is God calling you to make peace with this morning? You can make this as broad or as focused as the Spirit leads you. My prayer is that today you would know the blessedness of being a peacemaker. God has called us to be that today and every day. What do you need to do to make peace at home, at church, in the community, or even in the world? This morning, my prayer is that today you will know who God is calling you to make peace with. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have called us to be peacemakers. But to call us alone would be so difficult. I thank you, Lord, that you have given us witnesses, those who have made peace in your name. I thank you for the witness of Palmer Becker. I thank you for the witness of Calamitas. But I thank you most of all for your witness, Lord Jesus, as you made peace for us. Lord, I pray that for those who may be called even today, even those sitting here at this moment, Lord, those that you would call to be peacemakers, whether it be in their homes or their schools or their workplaces, their church, their community, or their world, Lord, would you give them the power of your spirit and the courage to know that they are doing their Father's business. I thank you, Jesus.